in this video I'm going to show you a, a simple bumper that I, I built for my go-kart. Um, but I had to I learn a few little tricks in there that I thought other people might like to know. Um, the, the exact bumper that I built to show you looks like this. From the top you can see that it angles back. Um, from the front view, these are pieces that actually had to be welded on to the top, um, but it the front is nice and straight, uh, rectangular, and then it from there it angles back, um, clear out to this point, and um, if you were to actually look at the front bumper, it actually ended up looking something like this. Now in this picture it's not quite mounted on, but you can see from the top it's exactly as I designed it. Um, from the front you can kind of see some of the angles. I believe that I had a there we go from the from the very front you can see how everything's nice and rectangular up on this front section and then it angles back and continues to curve around. Um, let me go down just a little bit further. You can see it a little bit better here where it's painted. Um, you can see these angles. I thought it came out really nice and uh, I thought others might like to know how those de designs and things were done. Anyway, um, so the very first thing I needed to do was uh, draw the bumper the way I wanted it. Um, so from the top, um, without actually going into actual measurements, um, I'm going to make it two inches tall just so I can um, uh, keep everything even. Two inches tall, 25 inches long. I'm designing the top section that you, that you see up here right now. Um, so what I do is go ahead and uh, create that. There's a couple more boxes. We'll make them, uh, again, two inches deep. And we'll say, okay, uh, let's make it about eight inches long. Uh, let's make it ten. It looks a little closer. And I believe I had a 15 degree angle on these. So I'm going to hit 15 degrees. And you're going to notice it actually turns to the left. I think this is a bug in TorchMate CAD light. Um, however, after I'm out of the creation, the box creation um, that I was just in, if I go, go and highlight this and, and do 15 degrees, it actually moves it to the right. Anyway, I'm kind of used to it at this point, but I believe that's just a software bug. So one thing I want to do is I need to duplicate this or mirror this piece. Um, one of the toolbars that I have, um, if you go view, toolbars, I have all of these checked, um, and I don't know which one it is, but if I highlight this piece, you have this mirroring option, or this vertical mirror. I, I do the vertical mirror. Uh, let me undo that. I need to duplicate this piece. Control D for duplicate, and then I'm going to mirror it. And essentially it just flips it vertically. There was also a horizontal mirror I used to have on here. Um, I haven't gone and added it back manually, but if you just rotate the piece 180 degrees, um, it'll it'll do the horizontal mirroring. You need that sometimes, but sometimes you don't. Anyway, so we designed this piece here. We designed this piece here. And then uh, we have to create the next section, um, which was actually... Trying to remember how I did this now. Okay, so we're going to actually make this. Let's control Z these a few times. I made the mistake. You can always control Z, take it back to the section. I'm going to make these, uh, let's make these 14 inches long. And I accidentally had my lock set, so unlock it. And then uh, my X and Y coordinates won't be locked when I change the depth of those. Now I do remember these being 15 degrees. Duplicate, mirror. And what I'm going to do is highlight all of these, do Alt-K, and I'm going to make sure that they're lined up on the bottom. And what that essentially did, if you come zoom in on this point, this point right here is the bottom of this piece. It lines up to the bottom of this piece, and this one's also going to be lined up. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to highlight this piece on the right, zoom in, and just move it over to the right. Now if I use my arrow keys I can I can do these fine little steps. If I hold shift and then move the arrow keys it takes larger steps. This is similar in many other programs. I'm going to zoom in a little more. You can see that it's still a little, little off. I'll get it close. I mean you aren't going to notice any difference on something like this. 
um, with plasma cut stuff. Laser, I don't even know if you notice it then either. So I'm doing the same thing here. I'm just moving this out to the corner. And I'm going to weld these pieces together. Now ob obviously this bumper is a little bigger than what I designed previously, but it's just to give you kind of the concept. So right there I just did the weld tools and the basic weld. And it welded these pieces together. Now, you notice that I have these corners clipped straight um, that are perpendicular to the front line of the bumper. Right now, they're not like that. So what I'm going to do is create just a box. Doesn't matter what it looks like, the size of it doesn't matter too much. And I'm just going to come in and zoom in and just line up against this corner. Zoom in a little more. That's close. Um, Control D to duplicate that. I'm going to move it over to this side and do the exact same thing. Uh, now to zoom in and out quickly like I'm doing, that my mouse has a wheel on it. All I'm doing is just moving that wheel in and out and it zooms in on my cursor or zooms out from my cursor. So zoom in a little more, line it up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm zooming out highlight these pieces, click F7, which zooms in, and F6 kind of zooms out. F7 will zoom in on whatever you have highlighted and maximize it on the screen. F6, I just feel like it's too close at that point, so F6 zooms out once and it, it works well. Anyway, highlight these. In my case, I'm doing an XOR weld. It's this one right here. Um, I have a hotkey for it, Control-1, and after running that, I can delete these outside edges, and I've got my inner piece of this done. Now the front is going to be very similar. Um, oh, let me clip these corners. One easy way to clip this corner, you, you can go to transform, fill it round corner. Fill it round corner is when you're going to only clip certain corners. I'm going to choose this miter option, which is not going to round the corner, it's going to miter it. Um, I'm going to click on this corner here and just do the up arrow until it comes into some, something I like. 1.70 sounds good. Click on that one. Click apply, close. Now you can see that I actually have those nice curves on that front of that bumper. Now the next piece, or the top of the bumper, sorry. The next piece that I'm going to design is the front. Um, I know, well, I think I know what I had uh, designed, but if I need to measure something, I can come up here to this tool, select this measurement tool. Now this measurement tool, you can measure things, click on this point to this point, and it says it's 2.188. Oh, well, if I say that's supposed to be 3 inches, everything on screen is proportionally sized that way. Everything has been enlarged. That's handy sometimes. Sometimes it's not. Um, Control Z to undo that. But what I'm going to use the tool for is just measuring. I'm not going to click apply or anything. So I'm going to click on this outer point because that's where I'm going to weld these pieces to eventually. Click on this outer point here, click on this outer point here, and I'm 25.016 inches. Now if I were to zoom in you can see that I'm not exactly selected correctly there and a little further here. So I know that I designed that piece originally at 25 inches, just wanted to give you an idea how you can measure things. So I'm going to hit close instead of apply. Um, I want the front, the front of the bumper to be two inches high, so two inches high, but we know it was 25 inches long. So that's the front piece of our bumper. Next, um, we're going to measure the next point. So we're going to click here, I'm going to zoom out, zoom in, get really close, click here. I have a distance of 12.163. Um, the weld can always fill the gap, so I'm going to just make it 12.1, just for simplicity's sake. So I'm just going to highlight this, duplicate it, because it's already got the right height. As long as my lock is not checked here, I can change this to, uh, oh gee, I forgot what it was already. 12.1 something. 12.155 this time, so I think I was 12.16, I think I'll just call it 12.1. So we'll make it 12.1 long. I'm going to duplicate this piece, Control D, because I have another side over here. And I'm just going to 
continue to wrap the bumper with measurements and creating pieces. So this point to this point is 2.064, we'll just call it 2 inches. So we'll call duplicate this piece, we'll call it 2 inches. Duplicate it again, go ahead and place it over here, and then we'll make our final measurement. Zoom in on this little piece from here to here. 0.764, we'll call it 0.75. And again, I'm going to make this 2 inches long. Control D to du duplicate this, uh, 2 inches high, I mean. 0.75. And duplicate it again. Push this piece out here. Now, what I'm going to do is align all of these pieces. The easiest way to do this is to just highlight them all. Do an Alt K and click on this center button here. Everything's centered now. Um, but what I want to do is uh, match up these pieces, this piece to this piece. Um, I don't think I have any cool tricks for that. Something maybe I'll learn later if I. I'm just going to bump and mim in with my Shift and arrow key and get them close. B move in the next one. and move in this piece. Now when I drag that I moved everything. So if I highlight this piece and then highlight this piece and hit Control K, it'll run my last uh, executed Alt K command which is to center it uh, horizontally. And now I'm going to do the exact same thing to these pieces. Move them in with my arrow key And I, you don't have to have this exact. I mean, it's not like rocket science or anything. I do get them close. But I mean, if you were to actually measure that, it's negligible. And move this over. And then I zoom in. I, I, if you need to move something from a far distance, zoom out. Because the shift arrow key will move it uh, really far. It's all... Uh, It'll move it uh, respectively to your how close you're zoomed in. If I zoom in really close and I'm moving my arrow key, it moves like this, and shift, it'll move like this. But zoom out, one shift of the arrow key moves it, you know, half inch or whatever it is. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to create this angle on these pieces out here. So what I do there is I create a box. doesn't matter how big it is, whatever, just as long as it's long enough. And I know that, well, I don't know. I think it was a 15 degree angle that I was shooting for. Maybe it was, that's too much. Maybe it was uh, seven and a half. So I add seven and a half to the 15 I just did. And that's still too much. So let's give it... Uh, Seven and a half more, that'll zero us out, and let's do a negative three degrees. And again, you'll design this uh, based on whatever you need. So we'll just call it three degrees. Um, actually, let's, let's move it a negative 0.5. So we're calling it three and a half degrees. I'm going to duplicate this with Control D, hit my vertical mirror, and that is going to come up over here. Now what I'm going to do is line up this piece the same way I've done everything, just manually line them up with this piece. And actually it's lining everything up across all of those pieces for the, with the angle that we want. Okay, so it's close enough for what I'm doing. What I'm going to do now is highlight all of these pieces, hit Control 1, which is a hotkey I created for XOR welding. It's complaining because I had multiple objects that I'm performing this on. Something might go wrong, and something did go wrong. So I'm going to hit Control Z to undo that. I'm going to do one object at a time. So I highlight this object and this object. I'm doing that with my Shift key to highlight multiple objects. This, hold down Shift, select this. Control 1, move on. 
Please forgive the interruption. I uh, hit a time limit on my recording and had to uh, go and publish that and start it over again. Instead of doing that uh, with the free version, I just went ahead and upgraded it so I can record longer than 15 minutes. Anyway, where I left off was um, I was taking this box and each of these boxes and doing an XOR weld with each of them. I'm What I'm doing is um, actually XOR welding these with my hotkey instead of coming up here and clicking on this button here. So now, I'm, now that I've XORed these, which obviously I forgot one, select this box and this box, control one, or the XOR weld, I can come in here and select these pieces. Sometimes you'll get these flaky things with CAD light. Some stray point, you can just come in here, highlight it, right click, delete it, apply that. Now if I, I break all of these up just a hair, you can see that I have individual boxes but I just placed them so close together that when I go come and run these commands um, everything works out well. Anyway, come over to this other side. I'm going to try something. I'm going to group all these small pieces with uh, Control G after highlighting them. Then I'm going to go ahead and highlight everything here, hit my XOR weld, and I should be able to delete all these. And Now if I highlight all these and I hit Alt G, that un ungroups my objects and now I should be able to highlight them individually. Now the only remaining thing we need to do uh, other than text, let's go ahead and put in text real quick. I'm going to highlight my text tool, come down here, type uh, stinger, if I can spell it right, and I'm going to double click in here, highlight everything with control A, and the font that I used previously was called, I think it's called Gunship. I got it at default Defont, D-A-F-O-N-T dot com. Um, you can go out there, download fonts, copy them into your Windows uh, font directory, which is under your C drive, Windows, font, the actual path. After you've done that, you can come under File, Install, Fonts, and you can tell it to search, and you can install specific ones or install all, and then they become available. Um, so I'm gonna I've, I've created this. Um, I know that I don't want this to be any higher than uh, let's say one and a half inches. And I'm gonna undo that. Control Z. I'm gonna lock these the X and Y coordinates. 1.5. That shrinks everything down. So now I want to highlight this and click on this box. Alt K. I want to center these vertically and horizontally. And then one thing I'm going to do is not do that. I'm going to highlight the stinger and I want to put an angle on it so if I actually double click on it um, you can come up to this font slant de degree right here and you can just uh, you might have to actually double click in here you can go ahead and bump that up to whatever you want and that's what I did previously I think it looks alright let's make sure this is centered again click on this click on the box do control K because I, that's what I told it to do before and it did move it. Um, so now we've got the text in there. If I do show fill, you can see that it actually isn't built into that piece yet. So I'm going to highlight all of this and say Control One um, or XOR weld is what that is, and Alt S. And now that piece is part of that. The only remaining thing left to do is this grid pattern, and this is the part where I think you might actually learn a cool trick, which I, I learned recently. So I'm going to create this grid pattern. I, it's probably not going to be as nice as the one I had previously because I took some tweaking to do that. Um, but what I'm going to do is create this bar, maybe about, I don't know, that long, that wide. And let's go ahead and bump it to 30 degrees. 30 degrees looks good. So now what I'm going to do is um, go layout, array. I'm going to go and choose the horizontal array. And I don't need to spin it. I'm going to say zero on the spin. Um, the distance, I don't know how far apart I'm going to do them yet, but let's just create a few of these, seven of them. And I'm going to shrink this distance down until it looks about right. Oh, let's call it 1.45. Now let's just go ahead and create about, I don't know, 60 of these. 
and that distance isn't looking very good to me. I'm going to actually shrink it down to 1.25. That looks pretty good to me. So what, now I'm going to close that, and what I've done is I've just basically duplicated this piece over and over and over and over and over again. And I'm going to highlight everything. I'm going to make this an actual group. Control G, Control G to group it. So now when I select any one of these anywhere, it, everything is highlighted. Now I'm going to duplicate this. Control D. I'm going to move this up so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to mirror it. And then I'm going to click Shift, click this other option, and Control K it. And that's going to center everything. And then if I zoom in, you can see that that's going to give me the grid pattern. What I'm going to do now is... Um, I keep us one of these spare in case I mess up and need it again later. So Control D to duplicate it, move it out of the way. Highlight all of this. Come and select your weld option. Give it a second, and now you can see here's my grid pattern. Now what I'm going to do is, if you look on on my previous bumper, I actually have this space all the way around the outside edge of this. Um, if I didn't do that, these uh, welds would actually come straight to the edge and be cut straight out, and it'd just be have a jagged edge and everything. So you want to you want to give this little a little buffer. And here's here's a cool trick. Um, if you want to make the buffer on the outside of your object that you created, then you'll create a male path um, toolpath. If you want to create it on the inside, you create a female toolpath. So now what I'm going to do is do the inside. Let's say we want a half inch offset um, this distance from between here and here. Uh, what I'm going to do is go machine, create tool path, and I'm actually going to do it on the inside, so I'm going to create female. And this first section doesn't matter. Um, if I go to basic cut, the tool is what does matter. Um, what I'm going to do is, I've already got this tool in here, but I'll show you how I created it. Um, I'm going to select the dot 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 here on the right, and I'm going to create... Um, Actually, let's let's uh, let me do an inch and a quarter offset. So I'm going to say 1.25 inch offset, and I come over to the diam. I leave this on plasma. I come over to the diameter. I make it 1.25, the exact amount that you're trying to offset. And I'm going to hit add. Sometimes I have to hit add twice. Now I've got the offset tool in there. That's all I did to create all of these other ones. Hit close. Okay, so now I'm going to do select from this drop down the offset that I want. Let's actually go with a mm, half inch offset, like I said. And as far as lead ins, lead outs, don't have any of that. And I'll say okay. And you'll see that it created this inner toolpath line, half inch in straight all the way around. All of the exact same angles. Everything, look at this corner down here. Everything's perfect, half inch in. Um, the only net, what you have to do now is highlight that tool path line, the inner line, come up here to arrange and break path, and now it's a normal line. Um, you can do the exact same thing to every single one of these. I'm going to actually take this stinger out of here, arrange, break path. Let's move the stinger out of here for, uh, if I did it right, arrange break path again and I'm going to group all of those letters again so now move the stinger out of here what I'm going to do is highlight every single one of these and I'm going to come up here because I've already used the tool once it's in in the buffer so I'm going to hit the female tool path it's going to do the exact same thing to every single one of these okay so now I'm going to highlight each one of these tool path lines that were created Say arrange, break path. And now here's here's a cool part. Now I'm going to take this inner line and I'm going to just drag it down on top of my grid. And I'm going to line this up the best I can just by eyeballing it. So try to make it even from left to right. That's pretty close from top to bottom. Now that's pretty close. So we'll just we'll do that. And now I'm going to highlight these two objects. Hit my XOR weld. And if I delete this outer object, 
you'll see everything that's left. I'm going to highlight all of this, do a control G for group, highlight my top bumper, and do the Alt K or Control K. Alt K to make sure I'm doing centered horizontally and vertically. And now you'll see that that didn't line it up exactly perfect. Um, doesn't always, but all I have to do is um, if I line these bottoms up, so let's highlight both of these objects and say Alt K and say line up to the bottom right here. It'll bump both both of them up to the bottom. I know I have a half inch offset, so I just highlight the, the inner grid. It's all grouped together. I'm going to say Y plus 0.5. Uh, sorry, half inch offset. I should go half that. So let's subtract a quarter inch off of that. And now it's all centered. Now if I take these two objects and do control one and show you my fill, you can see I actually created this grid. You can see the grid pattern previously is actually I worked on it for a while and got something that I like, but it, this is the this is the way I went about accomplishing this. So now what I'm going to do is highlight all three of these objects, all of these I guess there's five of them or so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can't count. Group these, control G, just to make my life easier. And you notice that I deleted my previous grid. It's one reason I like to keep one of these around. Let's go ahead and duplicate it, mirror it, Alt K, center, center. Uh, duplicate another set, move it off here, highlight this, weld this. Now I'm going to take my inner group object here, basically come down and do the same thing, eyeball it try to get it as lined up as much as I can and highlight these control one or XOR weld um, that's not the normal hotkey I created that highlight this outside object delete it now if I take all of this and group it control G and then come up to this center piece and just control K to center it. You'll notice everything is centered. We got this half inch offset all around these pieces. And now we just need to uh, weld these. Now I did I tried to do them all at once and these are all different objects and it complained and it, it, it threw up on me. So let's go control Z to undo that. Let's do these individually. Control 1 for XOR weld, XOR weld. XOR weld, XOR, 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 XOR. Now if I do Alt S, that did not work out. Oh, I know why. It's because it's all grouped. Let's do, so what I have to do is highlight this, Alt G to ungroup it. Now I can come in here and XOR these. Um, it's going to complain about these. I'm going to let me group those that set. Group that set. I'm just all of these uh, little triangles. I'm just grouping those. It's not always easy to do this, but it, it has really nice results at the end. If I can highlight them, Control G. Okay, so now I'm going to do these XOR welds. I'm just I'm using the hotkeys. You don't see me using the tools. Highlight Control One is my hotkey. Highlight Control One. Control One. Control One. And that messed up. So Control Z to undo. Let's do that again. Make sure that I grouped all of those. Control G. Let's see, I thought I grouped them. Highlight these again. Control G for group. Highlight that. Yeah, let's do that again. Highlight all of those. Control 1. That one. Control 1. Okay. So now, if I do Alt F7, or Alt 7, um, I got decent results. Not exactly what I expected. 
I'm for some reason missing all of these. They must have been grouped um, separately. So I'm going to Alt G those. Which means ungroup those. That's not working, so I'm going to highlight those, arrange, break path. Okay, Control G. Let's Control 1 those again. Normally I don't have this many problems, but you run into them every now and then and you got to work with them. So let's group these, Control G, highlight this, Control 1, and one more. Control G, highlight this, Control 1. All this, okay. We look pretty good. Let me check one thing. What is it? Okay, no triangles there, so that's right. Now the one thing I forgot to do was put the stinger back in there, but that's okay because I'm going to show you how it's done anyway. So the stinger, let's go ahead and we, we want it to be cut out. We want a nice solid background like this. So what I'm going to do is create a box that's just a little bit bigger than this. Um, let's make it. Oh, 1.5 inches. I think that's going to be too small. That's what my stinger is. So let's make it uh, 1.6 inches, just so it's large enough. In fact, let's make it 1.75. And I don't need it that wide. If I highlight this, it's uh, 18 inches wide. Let's say let's give ourselves 19 inches. Now well, let's give it 20. And highlight these two objects, Alt-K, center these on each other. And I'm going to take this right now, I'm going to say this, uh, I highlight the uh, rectangle here, transform, round corner, no, transform, fill it round corner, miter these corners. I'm going to make those, oh, uh, maybe in the half inch range. So let's clip each of those. I think maybe, yeah, that's okay. We'll say apply, close. Highlight these, control one. Actually, we're not going to do that. We're going to highlight this box. Highlight this center box. Control K to center those. And I'm going to perform a regular weld. And what that does is it it uh, took that box that I built around this. It's going to make it a solid piece of metal here. Now I'm going to take the stinger, align that up, highlight all of this, Control-1 or the x wire weld. Now if I do the Alt-S, I essentially just recreated the bumper that I had previously. Um, the grid pattern is different, the exact shape isn't correct and things, but it's just to kind of give you an idea of how that's done. Now when you go and cut these out you can line up these pieces exactly where you want them to make them fit. Um, don't resize it like I just did there. Um, cut them out. It's just kind of like a puzzle. Then you just get a line everything up, square everything up, and weld them together after you're done. Thanks for watching.